In this video, I'll be showing you how to configure Kofax Control Suite using Kofax Configuration Assistant. In my previous video, I did share with you on how to do the install assistant. So right now I'm actually just continuing this step. So once I click finish, it will automatically open configuration assistant for me. Okay. So I'm just continuing from the previous step earlier. So if you want to know that you can check the first video and you can see how to configure install assistant from there. All right. So let's select finish. I'm just waiting for configuration assistant to pop up. It will pop up shortly. So again, just be reminded that once I started configuration assistant, I cannot restart the PC anymore because once I configure it and it didn't finish, it will actually break the um, configuration of control suite and you have to start again takes a while to open so just give it a few minutes all right so it did open up right now for us so if you can see here um, I already have the configuration assistant and it's telling me that I need to configure my um, Equator CAS with the SQL server and with this um, CAS name all right so let us go ahead and see um, what we can do with this one so let's see whether it can see our database. I haven't installed any, so definitely will not be able to see any information here. Okay, and it's telling me that um, it cannot find this information for me. So you can see, right, it's trying to test this, but it doesn't come up. So basically, we need to install our database right now. So if you do have your own database, um, you can go ahead and proceed to connect to it. Okay, so for me, I will go over and install it up right now. I currently have a SQL Express and let me go ahead and proceed to set it up so let's go over and click on the setup run as admin okay all right so what we're doing is we're going to be going ahead and clicking on the new sql server standalone installation okay You can also perform the uh, installation of the server management, management studio here as well. So that one will be on later time. I'll install first the SQL Server. So I'm using a SQL Server Express. Again, if you have your own, you can proceed to configure that and then run the configuration assistant. All right. All right, so I'll proceed next on this one. I'm going over and just installing whatever is in default. So I'll just press next. I'll go ahead and proceed next on the instance name because the same name is being used by the Equitrack and the Output Manager for the instance ID for the SQL. So I'll just I'll proceed with next on that. So in here, we have the option for your separate account for the SQL services, all right, or for the SQL service. I'll just use the same one um, as what is defined here. And then for my authentication method, I normally going to be uh, providing mix mode because I'd like to make sure that my administrator as well, which is running SA account, can log in to the SQL server as well. So I believe that this is the best practice. So I hope that you also do the same. After I have key in the password, I'll go and click on next. So it's just setting the feature for us now that it um, accepted the SA password for the SQL express now this step you can do it earlier i mean before you proceed with configuration assistant when you're doing the installation using the install assistant you can actually perform this step 
So what I'm doing right now is just showing you that this is actually required by the configuration assistant. All right, so now that it's finished, what we need to do is just click on close, All right? I'll minimize this one down and then I will go ahead and just uh, test our database connection. If you can see, right, automatically it's just provided us a, a check mark and I'll do the same with Output Manager. All right. So um, you, if you like to test it, you can you can click on test. That's fine, but it already has a check mark, so I, I don't need to click on the test anymore. Um, so I'll proceed to click on next because they're all configured. Okay. So it's just running the database scripts and installing everything for us following the details provided here. Now, if you do have some issues with your SQL Express, because sometimes SQL Express, when you rebooted the server, um, the service is actually not running. So sometimes this will become red. So make sure that, yeah, the service is running. Okay, click on close on this one. So for the certificate, I'll go ahead and click on generate self sign. Um, I don't have a certificate to use um, for the component, so I'll create a self-signed. So check it first, click self-signed, and then put the friendly name for your certificate. For my friendly name, I'll be using the same host name as this particular server, which is Control Suite 1, right? And expiration date um, is default. Okay, if I click save to file, then you would know where it's actually saved to. So if I wanted to check where my certificate is, um, you can find it by going over to this location. It will be saved there. So basically it will be created here. So a folder will be created called certificates and the certificate will be under the name control suite 1.p12. All right, so if you want to know where it is saved, it will be here, it will be under program data. So program data is actually a hidden folder. So just make sure that you manually type C slash program data, and then it will automatically open this one up for you. Okay, so I'm not going to be um, saving that to file. Yeah, but probably I could. Um, I'll put a password in. Okay, and press OK. So it's generating the certificates for me. I'm saving it to file so that I will have it stored locally as well. So if I need it, um, I can go over there. So um, if I go over now on that program data folder, I have my certificate and my certificate is, is here. So, okay, so I can use that again. It's a self-signed certificate. I can use that again. Um, to um, license the server, right? But again, it's until 2051, so you don't need to do that anytime soon. Click on next once you're done with certificate management. It will then proceed with binding of the ports. Click close. Right? So for the core services, um, it's currently running and um, distributed database service. So as what mentioned in the guide, it stated there that the DBB service will start automatically once you um, set up the security framework. Well, the security framework is actually the authorization and security over here. So I guess it will automatically start itself. Um, I'll proceed with next. Right now, I will be keying in the details for the account for authorization. Let me key in the details. All right, so I'm done with my details. So this one will be the domain name plus the username, the password. I normally gonna be using the same password as the login for the administrator account so that I won't forget it. Um, Host name is automatically filled up for me, which is the current host name that this server is running to. Okay. And then the data, cer data center name. Now, data center name, um, I put it as um, the host name. 
Now, data, um, data center name, if you have one or more security framework that is running on different server, then um, normally you put the data, ser um, yeah, data center name um, depending on the particular server that the security framework is running to. Now, as I only have a all-in-one server, I'm using just the host name for this particular server. So let's go ahead and click on apply. All right, we're done with the security framework. Click on close. All right. All good with the details. Port 8181. Okay, click on next. We're doing control suite enrollment right now. This will automatically enroll all of the service to the security framework. Click on close. Right. And then you were asked um you know which service that you like to enroll. Um I guess they are all enrolled, but um I'll select it and click on enroll just to uh, make sure. But yeah. They are already all enrolled, so I guess we just click on next. And then we have the configuration um, services that you wanted to start the service if you want them to start now. So usually what we'll do is um, if it has a local system credential, we'll try to highlight all and start them up. If there will be some failures, what we need to do is to make sure that we change the credential and then test it again because it definitely cannot use the local system credentials to run that service. Okay, so you need to key in the um, domain slash username and then the password for that admin account. So if we encounter that, I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I didn't get any error. Um, there are some for starting scheduler can see right so what I'll do is I'll click on close and some of the manual ones I'll go ahead and select and then retry again yeah but from checking it seems that all are running just click on next all right so now that we have this information, we are now in the licensing portion. So what to do with licensing is to first visit this website, okay, which is the COFAX license registration. You key in your email address and the registration code that you have for the license, okay? That email address is really important because this is where you're going to receive your um, license file which is the bin file okay for offline activation so if you do have um, internet connection on your um, control suite server you don't need to actually um, yeah license um, sorry you don't need to go over and um, upload the bin file okay you just need to update it online okay but you still require to register your COFAX license okay for license registration now I actually have registered the license for this server and if you want to know more how to um, license my COFAX server I actually have one video on how to do so it will tell you the exact step okay so I will not be sharing that anymore because I have it on another video so you can go and check that out okay the most important when you are um, licensing the COFAX control suite server is make sure that you copy it okay this one click this copy server button if you 
have not done that and you manually type the server ID, if there's a mistake on this one, you will have an issue and it will still become no data here. So meaning your entitlement for the particular license that you have will not appear. Okay. So um, if you have gone through the COFAX or the new ones control suite, e-learning it will actually tell you about the entitlement portal now basically from understanding entitlement portal is no longer um, being used because it already has it in the configuration assistant so this is where your entitlement would be okay so you should automatically see this um, available so as I mentioned earlier I have already downloaded that so I don't need to open the COFAX portal for registration and register the license again because I've done that um, earlier. So what I will be doing is I'll be going ahead and just trying to go ahead and update my license. So to update my license, what I'll do is click on refresh license. From the refresh license screen, you have the option to update license online or the license server has no access to the internet and you can update the license from a binary downloaded from Kofax support portal. So um, earlier, if I've told you that you will receive an email once you register it, um, you will have a bean file. That bean file can be browsed from here and you can apply the license. Again, this is only if you are working with Control Suite and installing it offline, okay? Um, as I have it online, I will go ahead and click on the update license online because I have already registered it online, um, you know, sometime earlier. So let's do that. Click on the apply. We'll try to contact the license server and try to update the license for us. All right. So it's successful and it updated the license. If you can see earlier, there was no data now. All of the data is here and it's telling me all of my entitlement. Okay. So these are all of my entitlement for my license and the expiration date. Okay. So once I'm happy with that, because again, I'm okay. I don't need to do anything else. I'll proceed with next. It's just fetching auto store license data. So this is where you wanted to assign the license to this particular server. Click on close and then you can assign, um, yeah, to this server, how many license available or how many license you like to assign it for the server. Again, this is an all in one server. So I'll have to assign everything on this one. Okay. All right, so uh, there you go. So now that it, they are all assigned, I'll go ahead and click on next. Okay, click on close. All right, so now we are in the system administrator for um, the rest of the products that we currently have installed here. Um, it says here that it's using the default uh, built-in administrator for Equitrack. Um, also the same for Output Manager, okay, um, and also for Kofax Business Connect. So I'll proceed with clicking on Next because these are all the default um, user accounts. If you want to add a system administrator, you can do so. Um, you can select it directly from the um, from the main, okay. All right. So now that it's all set up. Um, we can automatically launch all the services. It has already been configured. Um, what we need to do next would be just going ahead and checking all the services if they are all working fine. All right, so I uh, will have a few videos that will come in relating to setting up the Equitrack for the first time, setting up the or auto store, how to set up your Business Connect license, um, how to get the output manager set up as well. So there will be a few videos that will come in. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.